The apostles rejoice with the prophets because the Theotokos prays for us to the eternal God. O your Holy Our God, we render glory to you, Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and forever. and incline your 
Feast of the Mother of God. I think there's only one that doesn't. Okay, and it is one that's kind of strange to people because it doesn't mention her at all. It talks about Martha and Mary. Okay, um, and then uh, to add to the mix, there is that then there's that the phrase at the very end that doesn't even belong to that gospel. It says, uh, "Someone in the crowd said, 'Blessed is the womb that bore thee, 
and the breast. That there's the there's the whole chapter separate from there. Okay, but the church, thousand something years ago, um, merged this, these last verses with uh, the, the, the visit of Christ to the house of uh, Martha and Mary. Okay, and we see Martha is all upset. So, you know, and Mary is just there sitting with. Listening to you, and I have to take care of all these necessities, and you know, tell her to help me. This is not something that doesn't sound very real about that, especially when you come back to your family. You hear people complaining about that guy person not doing their chores or whatever. Um, anyway, so the Lord says, um, Martha, Martha, you are upset about uh, many things, but only one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen the better portion, and she shall not be deprived of it. And then that's where it's inserted that other phrase out of context that does have to do with the Virgin Mary, okay, uh, indirectly at least. Uh, well, directly. Blessed is the womb that bore thee, and the breast, the breast that nursed thee. And then Jesus says, even more blessed than a womb that bore and breasts that nursed is the one who heeds the word of God and does it. Christ is not saying the mother of God did not do those things, but she did this the most perfect way because she did not just lend her womb to the Lord, but she gave her whole life to Him. And the, in the mother of God, we see, let me say, activity and contemplation joined in this one person. So she is blessed. She is the one who's rather blessed. Because she is the one who hears the word of God perfectly and has done the word of God perfectly. We hear the word of God all the time. I hear the word of God, but I don't perfectly respond to that. But the mother of God is always in a generous way, in a very maximum way, responding with a whole soul, mind, and body to the word of God. As I St. Augustine said, that before... Um, before the Son of God was incarnate, made flesh in her womb, the Word first came into her soul through her meditation, her prayer, her faith. And that's what all supposed to, or all supposed to receive the Word into us. But then she received the Word of God Himself, incarnate, within her womb. And the Word is made flesh and He dwelt amongst us. So this is one we honor today. Uh, the Holy Theotokos, the Mother of God. Um, <coughs> and um, there's an apparition story that goes with this. And uh, just in case some of you don't know it, um, about the year, I think it's 960 or 980 AD, uh, in uh, the city of Constantinople, which was dedicated to the Mother of God, and had a, a church temple uh, built in her honor which housed the robes of the Mother of God, her, her cincture, or zone, her zone, and then uh, also uh, a robe of hers, okay? Um, and they were housed in a church called Black Herne, or this, this section of Constantinople, the city. And uh, so it's a very popular place for people to visit. It says on October the 1st, which was a Sunday that year, so it's like, this year, okay, there was an all night vigil, which really meant Saturday night, which is the beginning of Sunday. So on Saturday night, there's an all night vigil in the church. And all night vigils always precede Sundays. Uh, Slavic churches do an all night vigil before you have liturgy. So you have vesp Vespers, Matins, the small offices. That's a whole all night vigil, I would call it. The all night vigil might just be a few hours, though. Okay. Uh, what we call all night vigil now. Maybe three hours, okay. But in the old days, it's much longer. Okay, uh, I used to go on the vigil at Our Lady of Peace. They had to go from seven thirty in the morning till a five o'clock mass in the morning. Uh, so there's seven thirty p.m. on a Friday. And on Holy Sat uh, the Monday Saturday at uh, five a.m. would be a mass. And so those things could be really take a lot out of you. <laughs> but anyways, um, so during that. Vigil. It says at 4 a.m. At 4 a.m., um, 
Saint Andrew, <coughs> who's also not a fool for Christ, there's a whole category of saints called fools for Christ. I'm not going to get into that right now, okay? But, uh, and his disciple Epiphanios. They see this vision of um, well, the, the assembly of the people praying. But they see this vision of these angels, the archangels, and the hierarchs, and these great saints, and the Mother of God actually entering into the church. That's what we're seeing in Pantaka. Today, the Virgin, our translation is not that good, so is present in the church. It says, is in the midst of the church, is actually how I like that more because it sounds more concrete. Um, today, the Virgin is, is in the midst of the church. She walks in to the church, she's surrounded with all these angelic and, uh, hosts of saints, and she comes up to the holy place. And it says, and then she knelt down, and then she began to weep. And then for a while she's there weeping, and um, then St. Saint, uh, Saint Andrew says to St. Epiphanius, do you see what I said? Do you see the Mother of God praying for us? He says, I do see, and I tremble. And uh, then the Mother of God rises up, and then she's, then she's elevated above the people, and she pulls out this outer veil, omophoria, pokrog, Slavonic, pokrog. She holds this over the people. There's no word spoken. Okay. And, uh, um, and then that's kind of how it ends, the, the language. <coughs> but what follows is Nestor, who's one of the ancient Russian chroniclers, uh, uh, has a story in there. And uh, saying that uh, this vision is tied up with uh, some historical events okay, where Constantinople was threatened. Constantinople was a walled city and it's very fortified and it's, it's almost impossible for people to penetrate that place. Um, but uh, it happened at different times. Okay, and, this, and then eventually, in the 15th century, the Muslims took over and destroyed it. The Byzantine Empire, okay. the Byzantine uh, center there, Constantinople. But anyways, so uh, there's different waves of people throughout, throughout history, and one of the waves actually was ancient Russians. Okay. They weren't Christian yet, okay, but they attacked the city. And so one, so Nestor records this uh, that uh, these pagan Russians were coming to the city. I mean, the city is called, it was known as the city of the Theotokos, because it's dedicated to them. So a lot of our prayers say, your city calls out to you, or your city uh, gives thanks to you. Okay. Um, and uh, so, at the, uh, so some say that it's during that vigil that they're basically attacking the, the city, or approaching the city, uh, and then after this apparition, then they're repelled. Okay. There's some other times when Persians came there, and then uh, there's another type of vision where on the walls of the city, <coughs> they saw this luminous lady. And then they, well, they feared, feared that and they, re they re are pulled back. Whatever the situation, it seems like this story could stand on its own, just as it is. Okay, but historically, people have seen uh, the help they received at different times to that same intercession of the Mother of God. It's like the Mother of God in this event put her veil of protection upon us. In the Western Church, on October seventh, is Our Lady of Victory. The Rosary. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, it's called Our Lady of the Rosary. It's called Our Lady of Victory. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because there's a big battle in the Panto, okay, yeah. uh, where um, uh, Islamic forces, the Turks, were advancing, and it could have gone to Europe, and they had already been there. They had already had Spain for a few hundred years. Yeah, um, but <laughs> thousands of years. <laughs> um, so at this, the the Pope had asked everyone to pray to the Mother of God, to ask her for intercession, and um, and even though the Christian <laughs> forces were outnumbered. Um, somehow uh, they had the victory there, okay. 
uh, if you could call it a victory, because so many people died were hurt on both sides. Okay, but at least the advancement didn't continue. Okay, um, and of course then they said, well, this is this is the victory of Our Lady, the victory of the Mother of God. So that's what they called Our Lady victories. And later on, they changed the feast to Our Lady of the Rosary. But I don't think it's a coincidence that two different events or a series of events um, in October, in, in the East, October first, in the West, October seventh. It's all within one week. You say the East and the West glorifies God for the intervention of His Mother. Um, and I think we need to do that in our age, in our situation, in our time. And each person here is burdened by something. Each of us needs some kind of protection, some kind of intervention of the Lord for our souls, our minds, our bodies, our families, our situations, our finances, or whatever. These fears and things we ha have, anxieties known and unknown. Um, we ask the Mother God, place your veil of protection, that maternal veil of protection. Just as a mother walking in the storm with a child, might put a veil over the child to protect that child. We ask the Mother God to do that to our world, to our church, which has also a lot of troubles in this world, mm -hmm. uh, in our families, and our own self. Each one of us is a storm. And so we ask the Mother of God to be with us. That's why I've asked to, to give those names. And if you didn't send any names uh, or put your name, names or petitions, you can send them by email too. Because we'll have them for a whole month of praying for the Holy Protection of the God for, uh, for our intentions. And that's where that basket over there is. So today, the Virgin is in the midst of the church. And she prays continuous, continuously for, to God for us, to the eternal God, to Him, be praise and glory and adoration now to the age of the ages. So 
O Lord God Almighty, O Lord our Holy, receive the sacrifice of praise for those who call upon you with their whole heart. And accept also the prayer of the sinners. Bring us to your holy altar, enable us to offer you gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and for the people's failings. <clears throat> Make us worthy to find favor in your sight, that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you. That the good spirit of your grace may rest on us on his gifts of your presence and on all your people. Grant this to the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom we are blessed, giving you all holy good life in your spirit, now and ever. And forever. Amen. Peace be to all. And to your spirit. Let us love one another, that with mine we may profess. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, one in essence.
his blessed power as a loving and kind master and say, Holy are you and all holy, you and your only begotten Son, and your Holy Spirit. <coughs> holy are you and all holy, magnificent and good glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him shall not perish, but have life everlasting. He came and fulfilled the whole divine plan on our behalf. On the night he was betrayed, or rather when he surrendered himself for the life of the world, with his bread and his holy and pure and immaculate hands, he gave thanks and blessed, sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. For the mission of sin. Amen. Right Christ, he took the chalice after supper, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and therefore many. For the mission of sin. Salvation, 
Remember, O Lord, those who bring offerings and perform good deeds in the holy churches, and those who remember the poor, and upon all of us, and on your mercies. And grant that with one voice and one heart, for we glorify and praise most honored and magnificent name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, <coughs> and forever. Amen. Amen. Have mercy is for our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is all of you. And with your spirit. Now that we have made all our saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. May we see the Lord's holy, heavenly, and mythical altar as the Lord's spiritual fragrance and send out upon us in return his divine grace and give the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. May we be put upon affliction, rest in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. To save us, have mercy, and to preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord,
question where it came from. I agree with Anthony for the that that's a body of what God is doing to the rest of my sins. Oh Lord, I believe, believe and profess that you truly practice the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners from the time of the first. Accept me today as the partaker of the mystical supper of the Son of God, for I will not reveal you mysteries to your enemies, nor will I give you a kiss as the Judas, but like the thief I trust you. Remember me, O Lord, when you come into your kingdom. Remember me, O Master, when you come into your kingdom. Remember me, O Holy One, when you come into your kingdom. May the partaking of the mysteries of the Christian Lord be not for my judgment or condemnation, but for the healing of the soul and body. O Lord, I believe and profess that this is an about to receive. It's truly your most precious body and your life giving blood, which I pray in the words of Christian for the remission of all my sins and for the life everlasting. Amen. O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. O oh God, cleanse me of my sins and have mercy on me. O oh Lord, forgive me, for I sin without number. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh -huh. 